Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a visualizer in After Effects with the plugin trap code form and this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Okay, so let's get started. First off, we want to create a new um, project and then we create a new composition gonna call this one visuals mine is gonna be 1080p 60 frames per second and for this tutorial um, it's gonna be 30 seconds long background color black okay we go to our um, visuals comp and we uh, right click go new we create a new solid background doesn't really matter the aspect ratio should be the same uh, or like the size should be the same as the composition okay then we look out for form this is a third party plugin so it is not built in you have to buy it or <clears throat> acquire um okay let's put the resolution on the highest here okay then you go to your effects con effect controls these are on the left you go to base form and there first you want to change the size because right now it is pretty small the way um, trap code form works is with particles and you want to increase the size of the whole form and later we're going to be increasing the particle amount so the size 5000 in x 5000 in y the particle amount in X, oh no, 715, and in Y, 520, not 420, and the particles in Z, just one. We only need one ground. Okay, so now we have two options. We can either go ahead, take the camera, build into After Effects and adjust it so we have a great look to our um, bottom or we just go ahead and change the rotation um, in my opinion the better option is to change rotation because after effects tends to um, take longer to render when you use the camera we're going to be using the camera anyways later but there are also third party plugins for that but i'm not going to be using these today so rotation on x 91 and there you go. Now you already have the, the base form of which we're going to working on later. You can change the particle uh, amount if you want to. I just like this option. If you change the particles on um, Z, you get this crazy psychedelic stuff. I don't know. Also, move a little bit into, into the, the form because if you're on... Um, this if, if you're um, zoomed out then it just looks bad so move in minus 90 just to be safe okay next up what is going to be making this um, form audio reactive basically in the fractal field you have the option called this place and let's say put this on 20 you can see that it already has this displacement that looks naturally and not forced but before we do that let's put the displacement on zero again and make the size effect and the opacity both on one so it looks a little bit more natural and not too forced the displacement let's put this on 15 okay that was not 15 and we have this option called flow Right now, if you move around, there really isn't a lot going on. So, the flow basically makes everything flow, as the name says. And so, if there's no audio reaction, which will be added later, um, it doesn't look boring at all. And there's actually some movement going on. Okay, we can put that on zero again. Now we want to create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this one Sound Keys. Okay, I just like to rename 
all my uh, layers so I don't get confused. So I look up sound keys on the side, it's also a trap code plugin. If you buy the whole suit, you're gonna have a uh, nice time because these are all amazing. Um, let's open up something nice. Let's use, um, actually it's use a song by Eminence. I like shapes and shifts. It's a uh, future house song, it's all right. Okay, we drag it into our composition. Now we go back to the sound keys, select that audio layer in the sound key settings. And let's go ahead and listen to it a little bit until we find a um, section that is nice. Okay, that seems to be the outro. Oh, is it only, is it only that short? I don't think so. Oh well, I'm stupid, that's the sound keys layer. Okay, so we have a nice intro here and here we can see um, what is going on everywhere in the spectrum and uh, in the range and everything. Okay. Um, Let's adjust this. If we move these uh, little knobs around, then we determine the range that we want to capture for our uh, sound keys. Uh, since it's a very bassy song, we want to have a look out that the output is not over this bar, let's say. And that looks good. Even if there's nothing going on, actually, that is pretty boring. So let's just pull this a little bit down. But now there might be a little bit too much. So you just have to, um, well, adjust it. Put the fall off on linear and one second so you have a more fluid and not too hard transition from the peaks to the lows. Now we put the minimum on, um, I would say 10, and the maximum on. 80 if that if that's not too much I will have a look because that's the setting from the previous song I used okay now we go to our form layer op open up the effect go to fractal field no don't go to this person twist because this doesn't look good at all so you go to fractal field open up the sound keys layer as well make sure that your output of range 1 is visible now you hold alt on your keyboard and press the stopwatch go to that little whip and put all the way up what's gonna happening is it will include a expression to your um, to your setting meaning that it's tied to another output now okay and we can see that we see nothing. Oh, right. That is because we didn't press apply. After you change something, you will have to press apply every time in um, sound keys. So that's too much. Let's put this on 60 and see how that looks like. I'm not feeling that as well. 45 maybe? Yeah. Actually, let's put this on 50. Yep, yeah, that looks good. But it's still boring. So, what we want to create is the depth of field. So, create a new camera setting. And you can already see it. You go to camera options. You can toggle the depth of field right here. So, turn it on. So, we have the focus distance which is way too far down. Just post the, foco the focus distance on 340. Trap code form takes a long time to render and adding the camera to that is just a nightmare for rendering but it looks great. So the aperture is currently on 25, put on 20.
and then we have the blower level which is a little bit too much in my personal opinion so put that on 80 and put the iris shape to hexagon and now it looks like in the previous video you can obviously adjust it all yourself how you personally like it I'm gonna be doing it this way <clears throat> now we go to our form layer and now we will add some colors you can either go ahead um, into the form layer itself and change the particle colors while on it let's just make the size a little bit smaller to 0 0.8 it simply looks better and you can also change the feather but I like it this way so we will colorize trapcode form by using the plugin trapcode shine it's gonna look really freaky now so turn transfer mode from none to let's say add you can also choose from the other ones but I like add um, on this one change your ray length to 1 or something like 0 0.5 depending on how you like it if you change it to 0 you have just the colors but I think it looks uh, swaggy if you do it this way if you click on colorize in the effect controls you can um, use one of these presets or simply create everything yourself but the presets are really good I used the electric one on the video now to finish it all off with the with the form I want to create a background because black backgrounds might look good but you will see in a second why they don't look that good actually go to your effects and presets type in gradient take your gradient ramp go on radial swap the colors and I will be using some nice shade of blue Pardon me if that's not blue, I'm colorblind. And adjust everything a little bit. Put the ramp scatter on 150 or even a little bit more, let's say 75. And drag it under all the other ones and you can see the huge difference already it makes okay so now you have everything audio reactive um you have the form done but there was also some some reactive text i won't be making exactly the same reactive text as i did in the video because that one was also made with form. I won't be doing a tutorial on that. That's a little bit more complex. And it also kills your render times. This is probably gonna take for 30 seconds, I would say two and a half hours or three hours on my Titan. Um, the other video was two minutes and it took 14 hours to render. Just to give you a uh, picture. Um, if you want to have a text that moves, you can just create a text layer. Let's say we put test in here. Really, really interesting. Create a new adjustment layer. Put the every time you want to make something audio reactive. Put sound keys on it. Done. That's all there is to do. Okay. You can copy the range. Um. I'm not gonna do that right now. Put this on 90, put this on 150. Let's set this up real quick. Apply. It's gonna cut every time you uh, press apply, it calculates on the right. If I haven't mentioned that. Okay. Now you go to transformation, now you go to scale. Or you either just press S. And you want to put a, uh, a expression in there again. So open up your range. Alt click the stopwatch, take the whip, go all the way down to your output. And now it's audio reactive already. Let's have a look at that. Really easy, just as that is. 
You can do the same with a video, a logo, or simply everything you want to use. Um, for those who have the whole magic bullet suit or the red giant suit, you can use magic bullet looks to make it even better. Um, well, you can choose these presets, which I don't like all the time, but there's some nice presets out there sometimes. Or if you don't have any presets, just go ahead, use a simple vignette, throw it on there, use some edge softness, and that should make a lot of things easier. But the blurs, uh, the blur quality is something like on five. Okay, now you get a better, a better focus. If you want to add particles, just create a solid. load a particular now the emitter is right in the middle go to the emitter settings change the position change the emitter type to something like box or grid it's really up to you I like to use box and then simply change the emitter size make it a little bit bigger like that and you already have blurry particles in the background which can be keyframed Sorry, which can be added a expression to if uh, to to the physics time factor. So let's go ahead and oh, that's gonna be so too much. Yeah, <laughs> call it. But you see that um, it's more or less audio reactive. Rendering, of course, uh, horrible. But yeah, you can you can just um, adjust everything like this. I'm gonna render a little bit out of this, so you can see what we have done so far. Okay, so it's still rendering a little bit, but we can have a look. It looks like this. Now, if you say, I don't like that, that looks like shit, what have you done, why do you do this, why would you post this, um, you can go ahead and um, put the maximum output higher, because I'm not a huge fan of this, actually let's just put that on 80 again, have a little look and you can already see that um, the waves are bigger and the flow you added at the beginning um, it makes everything look a little bit like water I would say yeah um, so that's about that if there are any questions just ask me on reddit or in the comments um, don't don't add me on Skype <laughs> mm. So yeah, that's the full resolution. Now it takes a lot of time to render, I would say, yeah, as said previously, two and a half hours, three hours maybe, because it has to calculate all these particles, like in the particular um, plugin. So that's one option to do it. Hope you like it, and no need to like or subscribe, I don't really care. But hope you learned something, you can find the After Effects file in the description of my original video I did which would be this one I will be adding that in the description so yeah hope you learned something <laughs>